Hey, it's Mike here, and today we are going to look at five ways that a vegan diet can help with Parkinson's. We're gonna start by looking at the literature on what might cause Parkinson's and how a vegan diet can help with those particular causes. And we're also gonna look at a vegan diet intervention trial and some very compelling case studies. So there's a lot here to look at, but I wanna keep a level head. This is ways that a vegan diet can help with Parkinson's, not a vegan diet automatically cures Parkinson's. Okay. Furthermore, I am not a doctor or some type of Parkinson's specialist. I am just super interested in this topic as it does run in my family to an extent, and many of you have requested this video as well. So I will be relying heavily on quotes from the research and doctors, and as usual, all links will be in the description below. All right, let's go. Starting with some background on the disease. You probably already have some familiarity with Parkinson's disease. It's a motor disease that affects movement, such as speech and walking, and it now affects about one percent of people over the age of 60. Michael J. Fox has become a bit of a poster child for the disease and a major advocate funding a huge portion of Parkinson's research with his foundation. The exact cause of the disease can vary and there's still mysteries around it, but we do know that it is a loss of the dopamine creating neurons in the part of your brain called the substantia nigra, which is a dark part of your brain right there. Now you might be thinking, wait, isn't dopamine just that reward neurotransmitter? No, it does not stop there. Our motor control depends on dopamine, quote. Neurons of the substantia nigra communicate with neurons of the basal ganglia by liberating the neurotransmitter dopamine. So dopamine does more than just fuel cravings that might lead to a midnight trip to the refrigerator. It also helps you walk to the refrigerator at midnight. Still dopamine's fault, but as Parkinson's progresses, the substantia nigra becomes less substantial and less nigra or less black. It lightens up and no longer produces as much dopamine. And once you get down to around 50% of the cells and produce 80% less dopamine, then symptoms start to occur. But can't we just give people with Parkinson's dopamine straight up? No, we can't because it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Instead, the going treatment is L-DOPA, an amino acid that is a precursor to dopamine and can cross the blood-brain barrier. Here is L-DOPA and here is dopamine and you can see super similar. And here is how astounding the effects of that can be. Here is before L-DOPA and here is after L-DOPA. but it's not without side effects, quote, administration of L-DOPA to Parkinson's patients, especially long-time therapy, may cause side effects in the form of increased toxicity and inflammation response, and people do build up a tolerance so it becomes less effective. Okay, finally, we're ready for number one, which is how fiber naturally raises L-DOPA. From this study, quote, we found a useful effect of a diet rich in fiber on plasma L-DOPA concentration and motor function. The greatest effect on plasma L-DOPA levels was found early at 30 and 60 minutes after oral administration, AKA putting it in your mouth. Now I don't think I really need to argue this point too hard, but vegan diets are way higher in fiber. As I mentioned in my recent bloating prevention video, 97% of people in the US do not meet their minimum intake for fiber. They are effectively fiber deficient. And it's not just me, the vegan dude, saying that vegan diets are good here. From the researchers, a plant-based diet, particularly a vegan diet, has many advantages for Parkinson's disease. And they point to fiber and to our reason number two, which is how vegan protein distribution also helps with L-DOPA. Like I described in my depression video, an excess intake of certain amino acids, like the profile of animal protein, can outcompete neurotransmitter precursors for transport through the blood-brain barrier. In the case of serotonin, it was the precursor tryptophan that was outcompeted by amino acids in meat, but not in the amino acids of a vegan meal, which led to a rise in tryptophan levels. But in this case, it is tyrosine, which is a precursor to L-DOPA that would be outcompeted. From this study, quote, the amount of tyrosine that crosses the blood-brain barrier is dependent upon the ratio of tyrosine to other competing amino acids. We have a very compelling case study that harnessed this principle. This was described as a dramatic response to a vegan diet, but it says Parkinsonism, not Parkinson's disease. So really quick, let's cover this distinction here, which is Parkinson's disease, the normal disease we're talking about, and Parkinsonism, which is just an umbrella term for any Parkinson's-like symptoms, such as hand tremors. It could be in the case of somebody who has yet to be diagnosed with Parkinson's, or it can be induced by things like cocaine. 
But in this case study, the person was medicated with L-DOPA, so it has the same dopamine connection to motor control, which is very relevant. So at the age of 55, this man developed a variety of classic Parkinson's issues, but quote, about nine months ago, the patient changed his diet to avoid protein during breakfast and lunch and found that he had a better, more predictable response to levodopa. So at that point, the idea was to just eat less protein in general so that the L-DOPA could get through, but then, quote, he adopted a vegan diet and since then has experienced steady and dramatic improvement in his motor symptoms. His gait has returned to almost normal with near complete resolution of freezing and start hesitation. He now runs and ice skates activities nearly impossible previously with no difficulty. So he was able to lower his L-DOPA intake by about 40%, which is great because of the side effects. And again, you can build up a resistance. So by removing animal protein, L-DOPA was really able to do its job. Okay, now moving on to number three, which is the high antioxidant intake on a vegan diet. Now we need to talk a little bit about how the disease is caused here because oxidative stress plays a major role in the damage to these dopamine neurons. Whether you want to refer to it as oxidative stress or these reactive oxygen species or free radicals, either way, they can shred things and it's just not something you want in your brain. This brings me to one of the major theories, which involves alpha-synuclein, which is a common protein throughout the brain, and also calcium. And this chart illustrates that well with, quote, some researchers believe that single alpha-synuclein molecules bind together in a donut shape that inserts into the plasma membrane and forms a pore. The hole allows calcium ions, a tightly regulated ion that helps neurons regulate signals to accumulate in the cell at toxic levels. This excess calcium leads to a lot of oxidative stress, which can then kill neurons. And this may be why calcium blocking drugs that were designed to lower blood pressure have been shown to reduce the risk of Parkinson's by 25 to 30% depending on the study and the blocker. Now I'll touch on why alpha-synuclein might be malfunctioning in the first place, but it's worth noting that regardless of the cause of oxidative stress, you're gonna be way better off having a lot of antioxidants in your system. And to a vegan diet, as this study that looked at 3,100 foods found, plant foods in general have about 64 times more antioxidants than animal foods do. So can we just eat any old antioxidant and it will do the trick? Well, the antioxidant has to be able to cross the blood-brain barrier, the age-old issue. Now here are some antioxidants that can cross it. There's curcumin from turmeric. There's resveratrol from grapes, cranberries, blueberries, peanuts, cocoa, and other foods. There's CoQ10. Now, if you've seen my greens video, you know this is our own antioxidant that our body makes that once becomes depleted can then be regenerated by a combination of chlorophyll in your bloodstream and sunlight. So yes, humans photosynthesize. And from this study, it also helps directly with this alpha-synuclein pathology. Another one is vitamin C, which you know where to get. And then there's quercetin, which is in spinach, kale, tomatoes, blueberries, and cherries. And I talk about a lot in my depression video. And then the last one you may have not heard of, which is fisetin, which is in strawberries, apples, persimmons, grapes, onions, and cucumbers. And that brings me to another incredible case study of a dietitian who got Parkinson's and decided to combat it by eating a low animal fat diet with a high level of two compounds, one of which was fisetin. Why those two though? Quote, in cell culture studies, both fisetin and hexacosinol have shown promising results as potential neuroprotectants as they appear to enhance neural survival and growth. Fisetin, for example, is a powerful antioxidant that has been shown to help neurons survive oxidative stress. And of 28 flavonoids tested in one study, fisetin was the most effective along with quercetin. Strawberries are the fisetin king, as this chart shows. And hexacosinol, a long chain saturated primary alcohol, was shown to regenerate sensory fibers and improve neuromuscular function following a sciatic nerve crush in mice, which is definitely pretty evil. Both the number of regenerative fibers and the diameter and thickness of myelin improved. So her prescription was one to two cups of strawberries a day for Fisitin and quote, as a source of N-hexacosinol rich foods, one to two tablespoons of wheat germ was included daily. Whole wheat was also consumed daily. Brown rice was consumed several times weekly as a source of rice bran oil, another source of hexacosinol. So low animal fat with strawberries, wheat germ, whole wheat, and brown rice. And if she strayed from that, her symptoms would return. But what were the results? Well, her neurologist reported that a variety of her clinical Parkinson's traits, such as her impaired ability to move and diminished facial expressions, appeared to be resolved. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But wait, how would this work? Once neurons are destroyed, they're just destroyed, right? Well, from this study, quote, dopamine neurons are continuously formed in the adult substantia nigra. Now they don't regenerate super fast and oxidative stress could easily kill the new ones, but looking at the one-two punch strategy of loading your brain up with those antioxidants that could prevent that damage, and then also that hexacosanol that could possibly help you regenerate faster, you can start to see how this would work. But I do have to mention that there isn't really a reason to believe that this would automatically work on everybody. It just worked on her, which is very interesting. Okay, now for number four, which is toxin slash pollutants. And as this study mentions, about 95% of persistent organic pollutants in the diet come from animal fat. POPs, we'll call them, are a variety of chemicals such as dioxin and PCBs and organochlorines that can bioaccumulate up the food chain into animal fat. And organochlorine insecticides are detected at higher levels in the substantia nigra of people with Parkinson's than those without. And from this study, females with Parkinson's had twice the PCB concentration in their brain than those who didn't have the disease. Now, the topic of toxins brings me right back to the beginning of why those synuclein proteins malfunction in the first place and then turn into fibery donuts, which is as bad as it sounds. From this study, one reason could be heavy metals. From this study, those with the highest versus lowest bone levels of lead had threefold risk of Parkinson's disease. And as I covered in my bone broth video, even organic chicken bones have more lead than you would want. And I'm sure you're familiar with heavy metals in fish. And if you're trying to go for lower mercury fish, keep in mind that according to this Oceana report, about 30% of the fish in the US is mislabeled. So that's definitely not as good of a strategy as not eating fish. So a vegan diet removes 95% of those persistent organic pollutants from your diet and helps you dodge those heavy metals. And to number five, also reduces dairy consumption to nothing. From this study of 130,000 people, high verse low intake of cow's milk was associated with a 60% increase of Parkinson's for both sexes and an 80% increase for men in particular. Those findings were mirrored by this study. Those who drink more than 16 ounces of cow's milk in a day during midlife had twice the incidence of Parkinson's as those that did not drink it during midlife. One theory is the overconsumption of calcium in cow's milk could contribute to that calcium oxidative stress in your neurons, but this study found no connection between calcium here. So instead they point to toxins in milk and another theory which is yet to be substantiated is a possible autoimmune reaction where your body responds to cow's milk proteins and then attacks similar proteins in your own body, which can be on your brain cells, which I do cover in my MS video. Now at this point, a skeptic might be like, Mike, okay, you have these five fragmented reasons that a vegan diet could maybe help. So let's look at something more concrete, which is this study, an interventionary trial that took 25 people and put 12 of them on a vegan diet, the rest became control. They based this on the premise that, quote, worldwide, people following mainly a plant food diet show the lowest Parkinson's disease prevalence and incidence rates. The results after just four weeks on a vegan diet, they measured a variety of scores such as overall Parkinson's disease score and motor scores. And in general, they were all 30 to 40% better than people in the control group. Remember, just one month later, this is astounding. And can you imagine if they had also been prescribing high doses of physetin from strawberries and hexacosanol from those other foods, what results they might've got. So let's just go ahead and take 200 people with Parkinson's and do that trial. So anyone got like 10, $20 million? Okay, now I have to include just a couple bonus points here that aren't necessarily fully vegan related, but I just felt like I needed to share. And the first one is caffeine consumption, particularly coffee consumption, was associated with a laughably impressive decrease in Parkinson's risk. From this study, about 10 times less of a risk for those who drank the most coffee versus those that didn't drink it at all. Other studies didn't get the same results though, which is worth noting. If you're interested in the possible mechanisms of this, they will be on page five of that free study, which will be linked below. 
Next, many pesticides have been linked to Parkinson's. The main one is Paraquat, which is very close to synthetic heroin or MPTP, which can induce symptoms of Parkinsonism. It kills dopamine creating neurons and guess what? Paraquat is strikingly molecularly similar to MPTP. Direct use of it is associated with a two and a half fold risk of Parkinson's. And if you have the genes for it, 11 times the risk, which is a perfect example of how genes are a loaded gun and environment pulls the trigger. Of course, it is banned in the EU, citing the Parkinson's risk. However, in the US, we got freedom. Freedom to give yourself Parkinson's. In fact, the CDC website doesn't even mention any Parkinson's risk in the long-term risk section. There's a conspiracy afoot. Now the final point here is on genes. Well, Parkinson's is definitely out of people's control in most situations. I feel like it's not as gene related as most people might believe from this study. Most Parkinson's disease cases are sporadic and are believed to be caused by exogenous environmental factors. In general, genetic mutation is an extremely rare cause of Parkinson's disease. Okay, so in conclusion, a vegan diet has some pretty compelling benefits for Parkinson's disease. It's a very complex disease, so I don't wanna make any generalizations, but it is not just me, a random vegan dude on the internet saying, vegan diet's good for Parkinson's. We have peer reviewed studies saying it outright. These are scientifically backed ways, like how fiber increases L-DOPA and protein redistribution also increases L-DOPA availability. It also means higher antioxidant intake, lower toxins, and pollutant intake and no dairy intake. Okay, that's it for today. Let me know down below what your thoughts on this are and a special thanks to people who helped me make these videos in the form of Patreon contributions and buying my ebook and stuff like that. So much appreciation. All right, feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.